I'm Lynn Robert Wolf. I've been in the Boulder area for quite a few years. In fact, I came here in 1946. Uh, I taught at the University of Colorado for 36 of those years. I came here as a graduate student and stayed on. The sculpture that I brought to Lafayette is a bronze and it's a, a gray wolf, although the bronze is green. Um, it's uh, essentially a life-size reclining wolf and one of the reasons I made it, my daughters suggested I do a wolf for my wife's grave in Red Cloud, Nebraska. So this is not the only wolf I have. Uh, uh, um, I find a wolf is sort of an amazing uh, animal, beautiful animal, and I'm happy to have it as a subject to work with. One of the reasons I work in so many different media, I found as a teacher I should be able to do it first before I taught it. And uh, uh, since I do painting and sculpture and stained glass, it's been an interesting kind of involvement. When I was growing up on a dairy farm in southern Nebraska, I found that I got clay from sand pits and model it. And my dentist gave me plaster of Paris, so I was learning to cast. And I used to catch my younger brother and make him pose while I drew a picture of his ear. In other words, the, the impulses were there early on. And uh, I don't know that there are any great uh, uh, changes that happened in my concern about art. I was lucky at the University of Colorado to study under Max Beckmann, who was an internationally known outstanding German painter. Later I was able to study in Paris under Osip Zadkin, a Russian Jewish uh, a Cubist internationally known sculptor. Um, I, there are just many different influences. Uh, I worked my way through college digging fossils in the wilderness, which <laughs> may have contributed something. Uh, I spent almost four years in the military in World War II in the South Pacific for two and a half years. It may have contributed something to the ultimate expression of painting and sculpture. <laughs> I used to tell my students in um, my watercolor class, I don't know where they are, the world is going these days. I'm greatly puzzled by some of the things that are happening, but when they left my watercolor class, they darn well would know how to handle watercolor, and they could go any direction they wanted, uh, and I couldn't determine that for them. Uh, uh, I just find there's a great deal of variety, there's a lot of art I don't like, there's a lot of art that I just find wonderfully uh, expressive. Well, I can tell you the boredom on a, growing up on a dairy farm where you have to work too hard for seven days a week, art was always a release and a way to get away from the dreariness of too much labor. Uh, but that's... <laughs> In other words, as I said earlier, I had no choice. I had to be an artist. Uh, it was, there was never any question in my mind about what I was. And my parents were supportive. My wife and children were supportive. In other words, it's helpful if you don't have to go by yourself into these things. I was in Safeway not long ago, and a little couple came up to me and said, aren't you Mr. Wolf? And I said, yes. And they said, we're Episcopalians, and uh, we go to St. Aidan's where you did the stained glass, and we think it's very exciting. And I thought, good, I like this kind of uh, being recognized in a grocery store. <laughs> Public art is uh, fantastically important because it's seen so by many people, in other words, and the response should be elevating for the people who see it. Uh, I just think that um, it's a way of rising above the routine of every day if you have good art that you can experience. I would mention that I think Lafayette is doing an absolutely fine job of having artists exhibit. One of the things I find is that 
I work all by myself uh, in a remote spot in the middle of Boulder and I recruit audiences. Now I've got an audience all year long and I think it's very exciting. So I'm very pleased to be part of this, this picture.